Oh, you know what? They needed a new one to update the website. It's only been a year and a half. Yeah, they're presenting. We ain't paying for that for yeah. February 26, 2019 at Lifdale Elementary School at 5.30 p.m. for an executive session to discuss personnel issues. The board met on March 12, 2019 in the Middle School Conference Room 6 p.m. for an executive session to discuss personnel issues. Um, in addition, we will meet March 12, 2019 following this, uh, meeting, following this board meeting to continue personnel conversations. Do I have an approval of the committee minute minutes? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes for March 12th. Do I have a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adopt the agenda is presented. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on to special presentations and reports. The high school students of the month for March are Seth Ebersol and Brooke Brady. This award is sponsored jointly by the Fredericksburg and Jonestown Lion Clubs, and each recipient will be recognized at a future meeting of the Lions Club. 
The middle school student of the month for March is Erin Shuey. This award is sponsored by the Northern Lebanon County Rotary Club, and each recipient will be recognized at a future meeting of the Rotary Club. Is Lindsay Kaiser here this evening, our student board representative? Yesterday, the high school quiz bowl team challenged a group of teachers to a quiz bowl match. Uh, it was five on five, and the group played two rounds, and we tied. The musical was this past weekend. Students put on the production High School Musical and had an average of more than 600 in attendance per performance. Uh, spring sports will be beginning, and in student council, we are working on the following events for the future, the talent show, the third annual end of school luau, and teacher appreciation day. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. I thought maybe you would sing us a song from High School Musical. <laughs> Moving on to secondary re report, we have Mr. Brudinka and Mr. Hoffer from uh, an applied technology update. Good evening. Uh, I apologize for my voice between head cold and start of track season. Uh, it's taking its toll. Uh, tonight for you I have about a 45 minute presentation on the manipulation of raster images using Photoshop. So I'm pretty excited to bring that to you. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, this projector is not working, so some of the graphics that come along with uh, the information that I want to share with you tonight will be on the far board, so as we get to that, I will share some of the specifics about those. Um, my name is Matt Perdinko. I'm here on behalf of the Technology Education Department here at the high school. Uh, we have a few things to share with you tonight based on what some of these fine young students uh, across a wide variety of our courses uh, have done and created. Uh, I do want to thank the school board and the administration here at the school for their unparalleled support of the Tech Ed Department. Uh, it's through your work that we're able to do the things that we enjoy and value in the classroom. Uh, the presentation I have for you tonight focuses on some of that work um, that the students have created throughout the current school year. Uh, authentic assessments marry classroom learning with real world application, and that's one of the major focuses that we have in the Technology Education Department. Um, Student work really takes that one step further by not just creating things in the classroom, but getting that out into uh, businesses, workplace, and the local community um, through the student work. Students collaborated across multiple disciplines to design, create, and produce a variety of products. Uh, and that's really what the focus of this is, is to showcase their work and the things that we're capable of doing here. Uh, I did put together a little bit of rationale, but um, in a nutshell, our program is really pathways that provide students comprehensive and challenging experiences across technology platforms. Uh, and the byproduct's been organization companies uh, and a wide assortment of groups outside the brick and mortar have really seen what we're capable of doing and have come to us asking us to create, design, and produce, uh, whether it be signs, logos, um, and assortment of other things. Uh, one of the companies that we worked with uh, pretty early on in their development, uh, you might know from down uh, Main Street in Jonestown, was Soterra Coffee. Uh, former alumni here at Northern Lebanon, uh, we worked with them to produce their logo, some signage, uh, and some workplace attire that they both use and sell within theirs. Uh, so if you get a chance to get some great coffee, uh, head down to Main Street in Jonestown. Again, he's a former alum, uh, a really great guy to work with. Um, uh, we've worked with a couple of local libraries, uh, one down in Richland where we made some uh, special tote bags that they gave away as freebies for one of their reading programs. Uh, we produced a hundred uh, bags using both uh, thermal transfers and vinyl. And uh, the comp here of Lebanon County, uh, they were doing kind of like a kid ninja program. Uh, and we produced some shirts for them, uh, a design that they brought us and then we manufactured and produced. Um, and some of my protégés here, you can see uh, one of the pro projects that I was pretty uh, proud of accomplishing uh, with the work and efforts of the students in our graphic design program was a, to produce some custom attire that was kind of uh, taking that Viking for life mentality and bringing somewhat of a, you know, the beginning of a brand and some school spirit, not just to students, but also staff 
and community members. So we sent it out to the entire staff, the entire student body, uh, and some parents along the way, just to try and generate some school spirit, some community pride, and, and really showcase what the uh, students in the graphic design program are capable of doing. Uh, we had six different garments and seven different designs, uh, and the only those have back. Yeah, go ahead and turn around. Um, so it, it was a multicolored job that we had to um, do some alignment with and uh, just giving the options out there. So anytime you see students wearing that particular design is something that we're pretty proud of. We produce a total of 125 different garments um, and it was something that we want to build on moving forward to develop some spirit wear and uh, hopefully open a student store in the near future. Uh, we worked uh, some team efforts, some collaboration. Um, the Boeing team, who's just so happened to be here tonight, fantastic. Um, they wanted some rosin bags, so they brought us a design that they, were, that they wanted to put on some rosin bags. So we worked with uh, Mrs. Miller's Middle School Family Consumer Science, where they did some stitching of some bags, uh, and we put a custom logo on that for them. So now the entire bowling team has their own custom rosin bags. Uh, so it was nice that Mrs. Miller, because I would not be doing any stitching or sewing if I wanted all my fingers to still work. So they did all of that. We did the graphic side. Uh, collaboration is one of the important um, aspects of not just in the school, but also outside in the workplace. It's one of the things that the Fortune 500 companies value is one of the top four things that they want to see in their employees. Um, the Dental Center of Fredericksburg uh, wanted a major sign for above their vestibule area. Um, that's a vinyl sign that produced. Um, we cut out some vinyl and the entrepreneur class created the sign, so that was a joint effort between uh, myself and Mr. Hoffer's group. And it's now hanging above the um, main entry desk, so it's a real showcase piece when you walk in there um, that we produce for them. And uh, a wide assortment that the entrepreneur class uh, put together, uh, they did a large assortment of trophies and uh, awards um, and cups for uh, various assortment of organizations, Little League being one, and Swatera Coffee, Heisey's Diner, uh, Moose's LZ, um, using a variety of technologies and processes from laser engraving, uh, from CNC routing, uh, the plaques uh, required all the material manipulation, and then the finishing on top of that, putting a lot of different processes together. Again, all capable uh, within the student work and the student day, um, producing that high level work. So you can see that there's a pretty good assortment of different things that all had to come together. Um, but it also builds some of the team building, responsibility, dedication, seeing the work through, being timely, because a lot of these things had deadlines that we had to meet, um, and then the communication aspect of it. Um, communicating with the customer, getting to see that the job is done the right way and that the product is delivered the way it's supposed to be. So there's a lot to it. Uh, moving forward, just two quick things. Uh, we're looking forward to building a TSA program here to bring competitions uh, at the middle school level so that way our school and the kids can get out to compete at a variety of levels and uh, further engaging in STEM activity. That's one of the major things, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, and building our program around some of those concepts. Uh, and moving forward, never standing still. That was too long, but I thank you. Mr. Rudinka and Mr. Hoffer, are you still offering the spirit wear sale, or is that ended? We will do another run of that, um, so we'll put it out there maybe towards the end of the spring cycle. Do you send that via email? Uh, we'll probably do it in a mailer in quarter four progress reports. That'll give us enough time to okay. get everything in its print. So Great. Keep a look for it. Hopefully we'll have some other designs for some other spirit wear to go with it. Okay. Thank you. Great work. Uh, moving on to our next report, we have our bowling and wrestling section champions. We have Mrs. Beidler and I saw Coach Shirk. <coughs>
You can see two of them out in our showcase. Our junior high wrestling team for the second and our varsity wrestling team for the first. So there are two examples right outside if you take a right in that showcase. Um, we had wrestling and bowling, both brought home section championships. Um, fortunately, wrestling this night always coincides with the Lancaster Lebanon League All-Star uh, matches. So Rusty pretty much told me right off the top, hey, you probably won't be there. Um, but it was, I believe, the seventh in a row that our wrestling team has brought home uh, section title. We sent three kids on the states. Um, so, thanks. Uh, bowling team, uh, bowling for the third year in a row, brought home a section title. Um, Eliza, wait. she's going to states on Friday. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a great showing in the postseason as well. Uh, we were in team tournaments and in, had three bowling in individuals this past. We had, uh, we had two boys that went on to regional well districts. Um, they did extremely well, 13th and. Uh, They were up in the top tier of the uh, state and regionals. The um, uh, team, we struggled a little bit. That's the way life goes. The bowling conditions just weren't adequate for us. The, um, the district finished left. Elijah finished uh, ninth, which qualified her for states. Amber is finished 13th, Bryce finished again up, up in the near the top. <laughs> I was on another fresh new way. Uh, I cannot express enough interest in the lower underclassmen. They have been fantastic, they've been dedicated, they've actually helped a lot this, this year. So uh, thanks to all them. We will we'll be losing one. Haley, she will be graduating. Carly, I mean, Harley will be graduating. And she'll be going west uh, to a resort to be a chef. So we wish her the best of luck. <laughs> Eliza did take down one of the records this year for uh, girls. That stood for 33 years. She, uh, the average at 186, she ended up this year with a 204 MVP. And we had three in the All-Star name with uh, Eliza Price and Cameron. Thank you guys for your support. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for all that great information. Is it busy? Thanks for supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call Mr. Koval for a security update. Mr. Koval? tonight, so I'd ask you guys to bear with me. Uh, I am happy to be here, and I'll make this as quick as I can, but I did have a lot of stuff that I wanted to cover. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, giving everybody in the room a little bit of additional information on my background. Uh, in addition to the 25 years I've spent in the state police, uh, I also have about 10 years as a small business owner in the private security sector. Uh, and in that 10 years, I've serviced some pretty big companies like Cabot Oil and Gas, uh, the National Rifle Association, Buchanan, Ingersoll, and Rooney, rather large law firm. And I also uh, have some experience as a reseller of some security cameras and surveillance uh, equipment. I wanted to bring that out because 
I know we're going down that path where we're starting to look at some things that we can do uh, to make our buildings and our, our schools a little bit more secure as we move on. So I, I just wanted to put my uh, experience out there. Uh, modern security, things have been changing in the industry an awful lot over the last several years. Uh, we are what you would consider to be siloed, meaning every building kind of functions on its own. What the security industry has been pushing for lately is a more enterprise level security system. When we say enterprise level, people typically think of the IT, but that also applies to the physical security. Uh, that essentially means that we want each building uh, to operate as one comprehensive unit rather than as individual buildings. Uh, it's not cheap, nor is it easy to accomplish. As we consider available options, of course, I would recommend that we entertain the enterprise approach. Um, and I'll give you a quick example, and, and this is something where we're fortunate because we already have pieces of this in place. Our video management system is provided by a company called Milestone. Milestone is what I would consider to be one of the top tier systems. Not only does it manage our video data from the cameras that we do have in place, but the system is also capable of managing all of our access control, meaning our swipe cards, which we, we, we don't utilize Milestone for that now. It's kind of off on its own. Uh, it also has the capability to manage alarm systems, panic alarm systems, all of that stuff can be integrated into this one platform that we fortunately already own. Um, so moving forward, I would highly recommend that we consider moving everything into that one platform, which again is not cheap and it's not easy, but I think it is certainly the best way to move forward. I know people have questions about what we have done uh, since uh, Jonestown. I'll address that very quickly. Uh, the first thing we did was conduct some rather extensive after action reviews of what happened. Part of the after action reviews are coming up with what our failures were and how to correct them moving forward. I say failures because nothing is 100%, nothing ever will be 100%, but every time something bad happens, we would be foolish not to examine it and learn from it and change what we do and move forward. Uh, so that has been done and that is an ongoing process. That's not something that's ever really finished. We have made some changes to some entrance, building entrance policies. Everybody's probably aware by now that all visitors to the high school will not be funneled through the middle school office. You know, there were some personnel issues that helped move that decision along but there's also lobby issues where we, we felt middle school was probably better. Uh, we have been in contact with an architectural firm. Uh, they have come in at Mr. Stosen's behest and, and I walked around with them as did Mason. Kind of looked at some of the things that we have to do in our building lobbies, which is a, a glaring deficiency in every building that we have. Some buildings are a little bit better than others, fortunately. The unfortunate thing is we're probably talking significant amounts of, a significant amount of money rather to fix, but they are certainly fixable and we are moving forward at least gathering some ideas. The Act 44 grant. Coincidentally, the state had opened the window up to that application process for uh, amendment. When we got the email saying they opened up the application process again, the email, I think it was very deliberately worded, and it gave us the impression that, um, number one, be careful what you ask for, because there's a limited amount of money in a lot of applications, but schools are either gonna get everything they ask for or they are going to get nothing so the grant process will not be a line item sort of thing. You know, we, we, we like this idea, so we're gonna give you that money, but we don't like this, so we're not. It's either you get it or you don't. So because of that, we felt it prudent to go back and kind of reconsider what we asked for. 
and we put a significant amount of time into rewriting the, the grant application and, and kind of streamlining and trying to put us in the best possible position to receive the monies. And I think Wendy Reardon and I and everybody involved did a really good job of that. We're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping anyway. Uh, we've contacted several security companies regarding cameras. Um, I've had a company in Mechanicsburg called M3T Corporation come in. Um, they do a lot of work, casinos, things like that. Very adept at what they do. And Mr. McGee had recommended a company out of Lancaster who also came in. Um, and we had the same conversation. Uh, so they're kind of, both of those companies are aware of what we're looking for. Both of them have extensive experience dealing with schools. Uh, so we're all on the same page. But there's some questions that need answered as, as we move forward. Uh, one question that we have to ask is whether or not we want a cloud-based system or we want local storage. A cloud-based system, all our video is going to be stored in the cloud. It'll be a lesser uh, quality. And there's maintenance fees. You have to pay for it monthly. It, it, it could be anywhere you know, 30 40 $50 per camera. Uh, there is a limited amount of local storage on SD cards. Um, that's a very popular option that most large institutions are moving toward. There's the local storage option. If we were to purchase new storage locally, we're looking at about $8,000 to put the storage in a rack. However, we own it. Money up front versus money spread out, I suppose, combined with a little bit of personal preference. So that's something at some point we're going to have to talk about and make a decision on. Um, both companies that we contacted are co-stars, so you know at least we're guaranteed by those standards the best price. We're looking at adding cameras to the elementary centers and updating some, some faulty ones that we have here and adding some to cover some dead spots. I think Elco just redid their entire system with the cloud-based and they're looking at about $135,000 upfront cost and then probably $35 to $5,500 per month for the, uh, the storage. I'm okay with local storage. Again, that's something we'll have to talk about, but I want to throw out some of the hurdles uh, that we have to, to get over uh, so people have a little bit of an understanding how much time this takes and why. Uh, visitor's policy, I know all the policies are being looked at, uh, which I think is, is a tremendous move in the right direction, particularly the visitor policy. Uh, we have some door buzzers we're looking at. They're going to be a great help to the secretarial staff identifying people when and if they're buzzed in. Uh, we have some issues and, and I think that's one that we can address right here and right now and we are moving forward with that. Um, and I know several months ago we had talked about the Alice Intruder training. And I had thrown out there that uh, Mr. Reese and I and, and some others were looking at offering some voluntary training since we have difficulty uh, obtaining time. And we did put that out March the 23rd here at the high school, 10 o'clock in the morning, immediately following power packs. We will be doing intruder training for the community, parents, and all faculty and staff. Uh, the parents and community are invited to the presentation portion, however, uh, when the active scenario drills start, that will be limited uh, to school employees for obvious reasons, I would suspect liability and such. Plus, we can't put all our secrets out there. Uh, where do we go from here? I think I mentioned, I think we should take a hard look at that enterprise approach and keep everything uh, on a single platform. Training, if you had to ask me the most important part of all of our security upgrades, it would be training. Uh, it's free for the most part. And we need to develop our means and methods uh, that would include training in the onboarding process and temporary and substitute staff. So putting together a platform uh, to manage all of that is actually a rather difficult task, whether it be uh, LMS online training, whatever, um, but it's something that takes considerable time to develop. Uh, 
the training will address one of the biggest issues that I think every organization with security concerns in the country has, and that's door propping and piggybacking, which is probably where we got hit several times that I'm aware of. People hold doors for people. We like to be courteous, and, and, and stopping that is going to be a near impossibility. Same with door propping. You run out to your car, you don't have your key card, whatever. Uh, but those, those are the sorts of things we can cover in training, and those are the sorts of things that we cannot otherwise fix. That's why we call it risk management, because we manage the risk. We're never, ever going to stop it. So the idea that we can fix a problem is erroneous, but we can do our best to manage it. Uh, that's why I like the training aspect of what we're trying to develop. Nothing is 100%, but we always work towards it. I know I went long. I apologize for that. My mouth is very dry, too, so I'm going to stop. But if anybody has any questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you. Mr. Cole, thank you for the update. Um, I think you gave us some really important information. I appreciate looking at the systems that we have in place and looking for improvement. Um, I think the training is ultimately important. Um, I heard a lot of good things looking at the cameras in our current alarm system, the Act 48 pursuing the grant money, um, the visitor policy review and the training. And once again, just to reiterate the Alice training on March 23rd at 10 o'clock, which is a Saturday, um, the presentation open to the public and then um, closed session for staff only then for the drill. But thank you so much for that information and um, I suspect you'll have more security updates at future meetings. So thank you for that. Yeah. Our next presentation, we have um, <coughs> Director Sakellic, Treasurer's Report. Anything to report? I don't know anything to report this time. Okay. Um, we have one final. Uh, we have a statement on policy retirement by Mr. Skozen, please. Thank you, Director. So uh, this is just a statement on retirement of policies. There was some discussion that occurred um, during our committee meetings on policies, specifically some retirement questions uh, of some policies. So what I'd like to say is the statements to provide additional information on the retirement of four policies listed on tonight's board meeting agenda under section 10.4, policies and retirement. First, to provide some background on a policy review process, policies are reviewed in the district and approved by the board for adoption, retirement, or modification based on various considerations such as changing federal and state laws and regulations, PDE guidance, and legal review. The district also relies on the PSBA board policy service. PSBA is a statewide association of public schools providing various services to school districts and other local education agencies. And through this policy service, PSBA provides legally referenced model policies, which are then reviewed by the district solicitor for legal accuracy and consistency with district practices. PSBA may also provide suggested policies which are not legally required to be adopted. So following this and through this policy review process, the four listed policies are recommended for retirement that we have on the agenda this evening. To arrive at this determination, various sources of law, including the school code, PSBA recommendations, and other school district policy manuals were reviewed. While the subject matter of policies may be referenced in the law, no legal requirement exists for the board to adopt these policies. Even if these policies are retired, the district must and shall continue to comply with federal and state laws referenced therein, and the district will continue to stay abreast of any legal developments on, and will revisit these policies as needed. So going forward, after some discussion in my direction, policies 143 and 144 will refer back to our review committee and district prior to retirement, and then will be considered at the April board meeting. And there were the two policies primarily that had some discussion uh, as a result of our committee meeting, so I just want to make that statement. Thank you. Thank you. We will now move on to our public input. We have um, one submission on a item on the agenda, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy, you have four minutes. And Mr. Skozen will be your timekeeper. Please state your name and address. 
Andrew Murphy, 1828 Blackbirds Road, Anvil, PA. Uh, that's pretty much uh, what he just was talking about was most of what I was going to talk about. Um, policies 143 and 144, I thought they still were needed by law. Um, also the retirement policy for 109.1, which is on the agenda. Um, it's kind of about the library, so I'm like wondering what are you guys going to do with the library? Are you going to get rid of it or turn it into new classrooms or something? Because um, I'm just used to having one. Not that we need to keep it or not, but anyway. Uh, the new policies. I have a big concern on 103. While I agree with not having, with non-discrimination, you're adding gender identity to it. My main concern as a parent is abuse of policies. And I don't want someone temporarily identifying as an opposite gender to go into a, another locker room or bathroom and sharing that. So I'm curious what you guys are going to do. Are you going to designate certain bathrooms for non-gender identity, create bathrooms that are single-use bathrooms so that nothing, um, no impropriety can go along. So that's my one concern with that. I agree, there should be no discrimination um, there should be no discrimination, no bullying, whatnot. But I'm just concerned because that's whenever anyone comes up with the gender identity, that's the big question. What are you going to do in the bathrooms? What are you going to do in the locker rooms? Because we want to keep all the kids safe. So what procedure or policy will you put in place to make sure that everyone's taken care of? And that's always the hardest decision that I've seen. That's always had the most flames on the internet as to, oh, Target's doing this, or oh, someone's doing that, whatever. So that needs to be handled with care and just needs to keep our kids safe. Um, 118, I was kind of concerned on that one because this is that would normally seem to me like a college course. Um, and so I was wondering how you're going to go through the board and state approval process. Uh, when those courses are figured out. So that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Uh, do we have any old business? If not, then we will move on to financial reports. Director Sakel. I'm going to apologize in advance. I am running on two hours of sleep with a two-year-old with a double ear infection and a seven-year-old with a sinus infection. Mm -hmm. So if I stumble or stutter or you need reference at the end of this, let me know. Um, <coughs> item 7.1, Statement of tra tra yeah, Cash Transactions. Approved payment of vouchers and Statement of Cash Transactions in the general fund in the amount of $4,380,480.61 for the month ended February 28, 2019. There were no disbursements in the capital projects fund for month ending, month ended February 28, 2019. Second. Roll call vote. Klein? Yes. Gray? Yes. Brewer? Yes. England? Yes. Murray? Yes. Bucks? Yes. Capellic? Yes. Erdman? Yes. Stell? Yes. All in favor? Motion passed. <laughs> Item 7.2, Student Activity Account. Accept the Student Activity Account for month ended February 28, 2019, subject to audit. two items for consent, item 8.1, contract services, and item 8.2, the MOU for the Northern Lebanon School District and Lebanon County Head Start. Second. 
Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Buildings and Grounds, Director Brewer, please. Okay, motion to approve item 9.1, building use form. And it's approval of the alumni band who use the NL High School band room on February 12th, March 12th, April 9th, May 14th, June 10th, July 8th, August 12th, September 9th, October 21st, November 18th, December 16th of 2019 from 6 30 as well as Northern Lebanon Girls Softball Association to use the NL High School gym, dates being March 19th through the 21st, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Player evaluations. Fredericksburg Junior Senior Legion to use the NL High School JV Baseball Diamond. And it's March 1st to August 1st, 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. NL Soccer Club to use the NL High School Soccer Fields from March 1st through June 6th. And that is 2019, 5 p.m. to dusk. Week nights, 8.30 to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. As well as item 9.2, the disposal of items, which would be to approve the disposal of the following items. One overhead projector at Fredericksburg Elementary, it is broken. Northern Lebanon School District tag number 1,441, 3,016, 3,019 items in room 200 in the middle school their outdated technology overhead projector. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Moving on to curriculum, Director Murray. Move to approve item 10.1, student request, which is the approval of the request from Ryan Almer, currently 11th grader, to graduate in June 2019. Also move to approve 10.2, policy, the final uh, adoption um, of policy 249, and um, move 10.1, policies for tentative adoption. Um, we have 100 through 150. Um, listed there, and we have uh, 10.4 policies for retirement. Uh, we have policy 1.9, uh, 120, 125, 139. Um, we have uh, 10.5 for final adoption. The um, following courses uh, consumer math, advanced US government, basic fitness, um, which is a hack course, American Sign Language 2, uh, techno. Technical, te excuse me, technological systems design, um, and stop there. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Director Murray, do you have some information to share? <coughs> I do. So under information, we have. Uh, School Counseling Fall um, Practical Placement of Lisa Clay from Messiah College, and she will be with Elizabeth Klein from August 25th to December 21st, 2019. Jocelyn Mertz is a 10th grader. She was selected as a youth de delegate for George Madison University's Washington Youth Summit on the Environment. Daniel Lingle was awarded by Amazon Future Engineers Program, provide, providing access to adhesive advanced placement computer science courses, cloud computing content, and Amazon Web Services content. Um, students observed from LBC are um, as follows. Um, Dan Baylor, am I saying that right? I'm not sure. Will be in Janet Garchinsky's class. Um, Kate Ekman for Stefan Wentling's class and Ashley Peters for Heather Shelley in the middle school. Thank you. Moving on to extracurricular committee, Director Klein, please. All right. I have two consent items. Item 11.1, .1, coaches, and enlisted on your agenda. And then we have 11.2, .2, class trip. We have uh, two class trips taking place listed on your agenda. 
Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just opposed? Human Relations, Director Urban. I move items 12.1 through 12.4 for consent. Six for action. Second. Discussion? Roll call vote, please, Mrs. Martin. England? Yes. Murray? Yes. Fox? Yes. Sikhelic? Yes. Erdman? Yes. Sell? Yes. Klein? Yes. Gray? Yes. Brewer? Yes. All in favor, motion passed. Moving on to Assistant Superintendent's report. Uh, just a couple of quick items. There will, we will be having another budget workshop in April. Uh, dates and times to be announced. Once we get together with Mrs. Martin and board members, so that will be coming, uh, coming up next. Uh, board members, just FYI, I'll get some information out to you. There is a school law workshop uh, that's being hosted by our solicitor, stock, and leader on April 3rd. I'll get some additional information out to you on that if you're interested in attending. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to reports of representatives, um, our career in technology, Director Klein or Director Brewer, anything to report? Uh, I have nothing to report. Our meeting last last month was scheduled on top of their meeting, so I wouldn't have anything. Okay, thank you. Intermediate Union, Director Murray. Um, just a continued reminder that we're going to be voting on their uh, um, budget, and so that will be coming to you, so just to get that information. Thank you. Um, legislative PSBA, Director Sekelik. I'll try this again. Um, the good news is that Governor Wolf is looking to increase spending for public education. And the bad news is, is that from the federal level, level, they're looking at cutting it by 10%. So I'm not really sure if we're going to get too much of anything. And um, I got a reminder as the discussions are leading into safety today that PDE um, PSBA also encourages that the board consider some discussions for school safety remain in executive session. Um, that we do make the public aware that there will be some things that we can't get funded and you don't want to leave out the parts that we're not doing. We want to have some plans for those in place that are all in-house and in-house only. So. Thank you. Um, last thing that's not listed here in your yellow folder for Mrs. Martin, we have um, our reports from the buildings as well as a tech report. Uh, please do take time, board members, to read that. There are some things for us to look at and consider upcoming in the next couple months, so please make sure to, to look at those reports. They were prepared for us. Let's read them. Um, public input items not on the agenda. We have one. Mr. Murphy, four minutes. Please state your name and address. Andrew Murphy, 1828 Glassbridge Road, Anvil, PA. Uh, there's a bias on these meetings. We're not allowed to call out names when we speak, yet the board members are allowed to call out our names. I think that's a double standard and shouldn't apply. Last week, Director Erdman called myself and Mr. Miller for a right to know request. He gave out numbers that mislead the public to think we're on track for costing the district 50000 in a year's time. This is inaccurate. You do not have 12 months of data to that you are referring to. You are referring to two months. 
The problem with the, your cost of the rights to know request is you're sending the right to know request to the lawyers that you don't have to. Here's an example of my right to know request dealing with the receipt of disbursement of funds or, excuse me, copies of all accounts, vouchers, contracts dealing with the receipt of disbursement of funds by NL School District from July 16 to present. Here is your denial because it was not specific enough. Here is your own policy 801 public record. Mm. This, the definition of public record begins with the public records of the district shall mean any account, voucher, or contract dealing with the receipt of disbursement of funds. Quite frankly with that, I don't see anywhere where that would need to go to a lawyer. It's quite clear, clear in your policy. So how does all from July 2016 to present not seem specific? That one's going to the PA Open Office of Open Records for Appeal. Let's look at your legal fees from June 2017 to September of 2018. You spent a total of 195000 in a little over a year. They're all here. You spent 31000 on a confidential matter one. You spent 30000 on personnel. The David Yavis reassignment, the termination and rehire, you wasted $18,000. The teacher contracts, you spent $18,000 on legal fees. Shouldn't we have gotten a contract that we could afford for $18,000 of legal fees? Confidential investigation number four, 11400 Confidential manner two, 6000 I anticipate that the Mr. Pinky issue is one of these, and even then you didn't even follow your lawyer's advice. Your budget, your 1.9 million or 1.3 million short, depend whether or not you use the funds for the food service funds due to other funds. If you look back in 2009, 2010, there was 281,000 due to other funds. In 2010, 11, there was no funds due to other funds. 2011 to 2012, there was 672,000. 2012 to 2013, there was a million due, and it's been that way since. So why do we have to pay it right now? So what are you guys gonna cut? I submitted a right to know for Leanne Martin's 500 ways to cut costs. Haven't received that yet. So you have 590,000 to repay an accounting error. I still have not gotten a straight answer where this money is coming from. Are you collecting it from our taxes and then just writing zero in the food service bond and not using this money? Why isn't the ending funding balance not changed? You've already paid this. You can't just make up $590,000. It has to come from somewhere. The slides from the budget workshop show that salary and benefits are 28 million of the 40 million in your budget. This, the second highest cost is special ed with only 2.5 million. So if your insistence on keeping the, getting that accounting error fixed, you're gonna to have to furlough Mr. Teachers. Murphy, moving on to new business. Is there any new business? I do actually have new business. Um, there has been um, a committee in the works for um, climate and I wanted to, um, I've been attending those um, and wanted to give an update. There was um, an opportunity for um, individuals to uh, attend a, a climate um, leadership team event um, last month. And as a result of that um, event, we were kind of updated on some things. So I'm just gonna kind of read some bullet points here. Um, as a result of some bullying issues that re were recorded earlier in the year, we engaged the support of um, PDE and the National School Climate Center. We realized that bullying prevention was actually one component of a larger area that we wanted to look at, which was school climate. School climate is everything non-academic, but school related. It is the character and quality of school life. Um, this small team, enlisted the support of a larger steering committee that represents a board cross-section of our school community and we met for a full day workshop at the IU on February 27th. Mary Edith um, Leckler, Leck, Leitler, um, she is from the IU, she's the regional school climate coordinator and she helped us develop some background knowledge about school climate and led us to identify 
um, the beginning steps um, in a school climate improvement process. In April, this steering team committee will be leading an effort um, to administer the school climate survey. So you can expect that survey to um, be circulated in April. The survey is an information gathering tool for students, parents, staff, and community about the four domains of school climate, which are um, student support, social and emotional learning, school safety, and high expectations um, or academic rigor. The steering committee will explore the data and then report back to all of our stakeholders what our findings and outline our next steps. Updated information on that steering committee. That's excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I was just requesting a list of who, who was on that steering committee so we can um, follow up. So thank you. Uh, there are some dates to remember. If there is no other new business, then this meeting is adjourned.